What was the longest one to complete for the Shady Robots that you remember? Because you spent, on a few of them, you spent quite a long time. Mm-hmm. Mm. Which is also inspiring when you take so long in a project. Yeah. I think um, kind of in the more like fun, whimsical department rather than shitty robots, I built recently um, this music box. So like a small music box that kind of has a barrel Mm -hmm. with little spikes and it plays a song. But I did a large version of that that pops a sheet of bubble wrap and then like plays tones into a pan flute. So yeah, you can actually program it to play different songs. That one kicked my butt in so many creative ways and it was such a pain. I think that is probably the like weird, funny project that's taken me the longest and like the biggest engineering effort. Where's the all sound coming from? So if you, it all came from me realizing that if you pop bubble wrap and you pop it right in front of the opening of a pan flute or like one of the pipes, you can have it play different tones. So that's what it does. So I built this music instrument off of that. Okay. If it's okay, can you describe some, some like how it works, some of the, the, the technical details here? Yeah. It's so basically, I mean, one of the big issues that I had so I worked with, um, as of a year and a half back, I hired an engineer, Stu. So we were collaborating on it. Um, but a big issue that we had was feeding in the bubble wrap sheet and like uh-huh. making sure that it feeds in straight and doesn't get skewed because you need to make like the popping feet, which is where you program this barrel to pop different bubbles, mm-hmm. need to be so perfectly aligned on the the bubble of the bubble wrap for it to pop in the right location. So there's a feeder for the bubble wrap. That's a challenge. And then mm-hmm. you have to have a barrel with the f- little baby feet on it yeah. that pops the bubble so wrap. That Why is it so exciting? That barrel <laughs> was a pain <laughs> yeah. as well. I had to get a like this rotary set up for my CNC and yeah, it was it was a lot of work. Um but that was really fun. And it's just like this is probably my f- favorite privilege of my job is that I can go down any rabbit hole I think find interesting. Did you have a lot of joy from popping the mm-hmm. the, yeah, the, that's fun. the bubbles? It's a lot of self-soothing. And like I got to spend I think I spent a week trying to figure out the best material to pop bubble wrap with. Because if you have two, if you kind of put them to two through uh or through if you put a sheet of bubble wrap through two rigid tubes, Mm -hmm. the air kind of just escapes from one side of the bubble into the other. So what I realized was that if you have a squishy material, like kind of a yoga mat material, Mm -hmm. in between it, it actually, it prevents that and pops it a lot more reliably. But like increasing the pop reliability was a huge effort as well. You have to pop a squishy thing with another squishy thing. Because you don't need a lot of force. Yeah. Like you just need it to not, the air to not be able to escape anywhere. Wow. But then also we had, there was different qualities of bubble wrap where there was a lot of transference between different bubbles. So instead of the bubble popping, it would just seep the air into a neighboring bubble and that like membrane would kind of. So, you know, I I just like getting to spend weeks on weeks of just studying bubble wrap. (laughs) Did you ever think about like publishing academic work on bubble wrap? No. Wouldn't that be epic? Because nobody's done this. I bet you nobody's done squishing it. Squishy material on squ- squishy versus squishy <laughs> for popping. I bet somebody has, but you know, I I always I thought I was going to go into academia. Like I was such an ambitious student. I loved school. I I actually applied to MIT, but then I pulled out because I was like, no, I don't want to do it. Um, but now I realize it's really good that I didn't because I'm too much of a spaz. Too much of a spaz. Now I'm, yeah. I'm distracted. I'm thinking there must be papers about <laughs> when you have two bubbles. Yeah, you need to know the physics of two bubbles. When, when you have two bubbles colliding, one will pop first. And there has to be good models of that. But that's very, that has to do with chemistry and whatever the the material the bubble is made from. But then, no, there's materials in here. There's got, somebody must understand bubble wrap deeply. Like deeply. So I'm just going to take a quick restroom break because uh, Lex is on his own train now. <laughs> and I'm just going to leave you and to talk about bubble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually don't need to go to the restroom. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
Yeah, I'm going to insert like a two hour uh, instructional here with like a blackboard where I. It's the skill of a podcaster. It's, I feel like I could throw you any topic and you could just go on about it. I don't know if I have that skill. I just. <laughs> yeah, love like bubble do, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, bubble and, on bubble <laughs> interaction. And, go. 